Welcome to Geek Like a Girl, where we use legal project management and tech tools to make the practice of law more livable. Today, we are going to talk about the integration between Asana and Slack. I love Asana. It's a fantastic task management tool, but if you integrate it with Slack, you can really increase the effectiveness of the tool and decrease the use of your bandwidth, which is always the drive when you are trying to reduce attrition and prevent burnout. So let's jump in. Here we have our usual Asana dashboard. So let's start with this. Uh, I'm, I'm on the home screen and I have my projects here, my goals, my tasks. What you're going to do is that you're going to go to a case here. It will be either a project or a portfolio. And if you want to find out more about portfolios, there is a video just about that. But today you would go to a case, wherever it is, and you would go up here to the right-hand corner and click on customize. You would then click on this icon that has the apps and you would have a list of apps and you would select Slack. Now I already did it, but normally if you haven't here, it will say that you are, uh, it will just be a button for you to integrate it. I'm going to click the button because it's going to take me to where I need to go. And then I'm going to ask it to open in Slack. I'm going to ask it to open this link in the browser, but if you have Slack downloaded, then it will take you directly to where you need to be. And here I am in Slack. You will see I already started doing a couple of things on my own in preparation, but here we go. This is what it looks like. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is, for instance, I McCabe can be in my case demo channel and I am going to say, OK, at uh, a team member, in this case, admin, um, please be sure to draft that letter today. Thanks. I'm going to send the message. But the thing that I can do because I have integrated Asana is that I will go right here. I hover over the message and I click on these three little buttons for more actions. And if you see here, it says create a task. Click on that and you can actually create a task straight from Slack. The beauty of this is that you can integrate your communications. One big frustration is that everyone wants to be your solution. But then you, when you have 15 different solutions, you actually have a bunch of problems because they have to integrate and you can't be asked to change from one tool to another because that's an interruption in your workflow. So this is a really fantastic way to integrate your ongoing real-time communication with task assignment. And that means that you're not catching tasks during meetings or um, on email or on phone calls or via text message or whatever other myriad ways we communicate nowadays. So back to this task, I'm going to say, I'm going to put the case name, draft letter to a client re retainer, whatever it is. And I say, okay, but I want admin to do this. And it's, uh, the project is optional. And you will pick, it'll give you one of the projects. And so I'm going to pick PI cases. I'm going to say, look, I need it done by Thursday. And it's going to have the little message that I wrote. So if you wanted to write more, you can. And then you're going to click create. Jumping back to Asana, under PI cases, we now have this new task here. That's the one I just created. There is one frustration I have with the system, and that is that if you were to set up your PI cases this way, in the sense that you, the project is all of your PI cases, and then you have each of the cases under a different column, it will automatically put them all under the first case. And I haven't found a way to change that and assign it differently. So you would have to come here and drag it to where you want it to be. Now, there are two workarounds to this issue. The first one is that you can create um, a new board, basically. And we're going to push it all the way to the front. Okay. Going back to Asana, 
we are going to say um, case name, and I always put the case name in front of my task just as a good habit because you want to make sure that if, if it shows up randomly or somewhere, someone knows what it's for. And then you're going to say um, letter to OC re um, deposition dates. Can't type today, that's fine. Okay, then I'm gonna go here, as I did before, we're gonna create a task for Asana, and I'm going to again say PI cases, because you can't type something different, there it is. And then I'm going to say, look, I want this done by Wednesday, I have my little description, I could add, remember to use the template from last time we had this issue. And some of you are thinking ahead, thinking, well, could you link the document? Yes, you can, but it's not the subject of this video, so not today. But yes, that would be a great, great instinct. Ooh, I didn't put the uh, task name. This, done. Then we're gonna create it. And if we go back to the cases, you will see that it is now under newly assigned tasks. And then because it has a case name, somebody could go in and then assign it to whoever they want in these buckets. Not my favorite way of doing it because it does create an extra step, but it does reduce some chaos and gets around this issue if this is how you have yours organized. Another thing you can do is, ah, did you see that? Forward slash Asana, you just start typing create, bam, and it opens up for what you wanna do. So we're gonna say case name, Schedule hearing for motion to compel. The assignee is gonna be this person. And then I can put in the name of the actual case. This is if, so then assuming that your projects correspond to your cases, you don't have them grouped the way I did just then, then you can literally just start um, typing in and there you go, family versus the same bad company. The due date is tomorrow. And there's no description because you hadn't written anything yet. And then you can create it. And bam, it is already inside here. And you see here, it's only visible to me. So if I wanted to, I could share it to the channel. And now everybody can see it. And we can very quickly with the drop down menu make changes such as market complete, like this task. You can, uh, liking this task, I know I chuckled, but actually it's a way for someone to confirm that they've received it. So that's not a bad thing. You can change your SNE, you can change your due date, and you can add to the project itself. So remember, there are two methods to add a task directly from Slack. Either use the three buttons down here, or you start typing Asana, and it will give you create a task. What are the basics of integrating Slack with Asana? For this video though, I wanna show you one little extra thing which I think is pretty cool. This is what it is. If you go back to that customize button up there, now that you have confirmed, there we go, we've integrated Slack, you can actually go to rule right here. This is a little lightning bolt and you can add rules. And because we have added Slack, we can actually add some Slack automations. I love this. So let's say you have a dependency and the dependency is when you have one task that is blocked by another task and you can do that in Asana. You can have it, you can have Slack automatically send a channel message when the task is no longer blocked in Asana, right? That's a great way to keep communication flowing. Um, the other thing you can do is that if a task is added to a project in Asana, that is automatically sent in a direct message to the person in Slack. So you're using Slack as a very effective method of communication and you're doing it through Asana, but you are not having to both assign and then tell them that you've assigned. And that's, that's just a very good use of your time. 
And you can do this for a number of things. And as you can see on the screen, you can have task or all tasks asked, completion status is changed, you send a channel message. So basically you can have messages automatically sent to the channel whenever there's a change in the task, change in s &E, change in status, change in date. And that way you are increasing the effectiveness of your real-time communication without adding additional steps. You are also allowing people to focus on a single place, Slack, for receiving and sending messages, while Asana in the background is doing the heavy lifting of maintaining those tasks, maintaining them organized, et cetera, et cetera. And that is my little intro to integrating Slack with Asana. I hope it was helpful. If there is anything in particular that you are challenged by, you wanna know how to do, you want me to figure out, drop it in the comments, let me know. I love making videos that are helpful to you. And as always, my goal is to change your life and make the law more livable.